understand impeccable timing as always with Pelle. Thank you. Thank you. Injury wise, you've got four or five players who aren't yeah. seriously injured who might be on the verge of a return. Mm. Can, I, can I just go through them with you? <coughs> yeah. De Declan, Declan Rice. He obviously wasn't available. He had to leave the, the London Derby and uh, he hasn't trained yet. We have another session in an hour or two, so we'll have more news about him uh, today. Gabriel Martinelli? Again, he hasn't trained and uh, we want him back. We need him back, but at the moment he's not been available. Mm. Leandro Trossard? Same situation. <laughs> and Bikea Saka? Same situation. <laughs> Would it be a judgment that you make based on what happens today and also based on the fact you've got Longs and then Manchester City coming up as well? No, the assessment is okay. Is he fit enough? Um, is he done enough to, to be able to be selected tomorrow? That's the question mark and, and so far he hasn't trained with the team. Are some of those nearer than others or, or are they all around the same? They are all in the same pool and Willie as well had a knock. Um, Fabio as well wasn't involved in the last game, so we have a few. We have to assess them today, how they see and um, and adapt to the situation because that's a that's a big number. The fact that with, with, with Saka he's got this consecutive yeah. this record consecutive run of games. If he came to you and said, "Boss, I want to keep that run going," would would, would that be a factor? Well, that would mean that he's feeling good, you know, and uh, and B has got now enough experience and understanding on when he's uh, ready to help the team and when he's not, but. Um, that's what all the managers want to hear, that they want to play and, and they, are, they are feeling good to play. That's the most important thing. And in terms of the goalkeeper, the inevitable goalkeeper mm. situation, um, can, I, can I take it for granted that the keeper that starts will have a surname that begins with R? <laughs> you, are, you are a genius. <laughs> I, ha I have my answer for the rest of the season. <laughs> Thank you so much for your cooperation. <laughs> Your first game in charge of Arsenal was at Bournemouth. Yes. I think only two of the starting line up that day are still at the club. What does that say about the job that you and Edu have done in that time? Well, obviously, a lot of changes. It's been a while now. It's been three and a half years, uh, or almost four years since since that moment. Um, a really special one. Uh, yeah, a lot of things have changed. Uh, many of them are positive, and um, a lot of things on that journey, that's for sure. And Danny Iriola yeah. was born within three months of you, seven mm. miles away. You're almost brothers. <laughs> well, we know each other really well. Uh, we played together. We had fantastic times together. We played in, in Antiwoko. It's, 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 a, it's a team in San Sebastian that has produced a lot of players over the years. They do fantastic work. And, uh, and we were privileged to be raised there, to be educated there. And uh, that's the beauty of football, that 20, 30, 40 years later, uh, we are together in the Premier League as, as managers, both of them, and, and I'm really, really happy for him. Is there something in the Basque region water that produces good football coaches? Well, first of all, is the passion um, about the game, about football. I think the education that, that we get, a level of coaches there, it's, it's really good. They really take care of the academy. You have to see Real Sociedad, uh, Atleti Bilbao, but all those teams, they do fantastic work to raise talent. And, um, and it's not a coincidence that um, a lot of players have come through, through there. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Miguel. Hi. Um, how would you compare your team today to the team that won 3 0 at the Vitality Stadium last season? Very difficult to compare. And we want to play like we did that day, even better, and, um, and still win the game. You know, we have some changes, and the team is in a, in a different moment. Um, the objective is going to be the same to be better than Bournemouth and, and beat them. Let's see what happens tomorrow. In terms of the goalkeeper situation, can you recall any periods of your playing or ma managerial career where there were two world-class goalkeepers fighting for the number one spot yeah. every week? Yeah. Which, can you talk us through those situations? Since I was 13 years old, one in Antiguoco and the other one in Barcelona. My two goalkeepers in the team were Victor Valdez and Pepe Reina. And does this inspire you in the way you manage the situation today? I don't know, but I was so safe. I look back and I have Pepe Ren and Vitor Valdez. I was like, we have a big chance to win the game. What's your biggest challenge this season in terms of improving your team? Well, playing better every day. Playing better and better and, and suffocating the opponent more, create more chances, concede zero, and play as far as possible from our goal.
the, the goalkeeper situation, the midfield, the forwards? What's the most difficult it, situation? It's all, it's, all, it's all linked, and the opponent has a big say on that. You know, you face different behaviors from opponents, different constants, games open up when you score early, when you don't, when you concede, when you have errors. Um, a lot of the things um, affect, but continue winning. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Talk sport. Hi, Miguel. Hi. Hope well. Um, nine matches unbeaten so far in all competitions. You must be pleased that obviously, depending on the situation, you still managed to come through and not be beaten by anybody yet this season. For sure, and uh, and we have to continue to do that, and that's the mindset that we want every every single game, win in any context, and we had very different context throughout the the season already and that's going to keep changing and um, as you can see now with the amount of situation that we have in the team with the uncertainty of players it's going to be even more playing every three days having to win having to compete in three different competitions in seven days and that's the challenge and um, and we are up for it that's for sure i was at a press conference last week with Mauricio Pochettino who said you can't buy confidence in the supermarket he was saying you have to instill it in the team how much are you instilling that the team how much do the players do it themselves well, it's a huge thing, and uh, it is the individual one, and it is the collective one, and then it's the one that is external as well, and that confidence obviously transmit um, to each other. And um, yeah, playing well and winning matches is always the best thing to do, and um, and we are in a good moment. You spoke about your friendship with the Bournemouth manager. Um, yeah. How easy is that to put aside when you when you're going into the game? I think I, mean, I think very easy. You are and you are in winning mode, compete, get the best out of your team. And, and get in the battle. And before and after is a different story, especially after, but during, there is nothing there. So you'll definitely pop in and see him after the game? For sure, yes. Okay. Can I ask you one final one? Uh, apart from the goalkeeping situation, another, the only other person that seems to be talked about recently is Kai Havertz, who doesn't seem to have perhaps on the outside settled in or produced his best form yet. How are you going to get the best out of Kai Havertz? Trying to help him as much as possible, be next to him, giving the tools, giving the confidence and, and giving the minutes to exploit his talent. There's so many parts of his game that he's doing exceptionally well and, uh, and we know the one that, uh, that needs to keep improving. But uh, as always, with any players giving support, especially when you see a player that does what he does every single day and the way he tries, the way he applies himself. He's giving support, more tools, and uh, and if they don't perform, it's because um, it's up to us. You hope they'll play his way into form, basically. Yes, and he needs to glide within the team. You know, the amount of time that he's played in, in the left unit with those players is three times, four times, you know, and um, and we're going to have to carry on doing that. And certainly we have the experience of all that with many other players and uh, try to give him as much support and, and confidence as we possibly can because that's going to, to help him for sure. Thank you. Hi, Mikhail. Hi. Uh, kind of linked to that confidence theme, uh, Tommy Asu seems, since he went away to Japan and played against Germany, I think, to really be, I mean, back to his best, I think. Um, just how, I guess, important is that and how have you seen him, I guess, develop over the past few weeks? Yeah. Well, I always say that I'm really confident the moment Tommy has consistency, he's going to be a tremendous asset for us. He's already is. He can play in any position in the back line, any formation in the back line, and we don't have a player like him. And uh, defending is probably one of the best that I, I've seen in many situations, and his concept, his principle, the way he applies it, the way he goes into duels, and, uh, and now he needs a run of game that physically is at his best. If physically Tommy is at his best, we're going to have a player that is going to be so important for us. When you say he's not like any other defender, is yeah. it just, I guess, Tommy is that tall but quite calm as well mm -hmm. when he plays? Is that what you're talking about? Right? Yeah, but especially the way he reads danger and the way he resolves urgent situations with a lot of composure, as you said, in the right way. Um, his skill to defend the way his body is built, he uh, makes him a really complete player too that is really difficult to get run past him. You know, he's always alert, he's the way he's been raised, educated, he's always super focused and for a defender that's a, a big, big attribute. Mark McGarry. Mark McGarry. Um, Bernie said in an interview yesterday that you were the player above the rest of that pack that, was, that came through at the same time. Mm -hmm. What do you remember of him not performing during the I would say the same. I think he was better technically, especially than, than everybody else. He used to play as a winger. That winger coming inside when he was younger, and then 
as he got a little bit older in his career, he played as a fullback. He would be an incredible fullback, inverted fullback to play there. He would be a dream for any manager to have a player like, like him. Really intelligent, really skillful, um, and uh, yeah, very good to play with him. You spoke to him just some other about Talking about yes, him. I did. Yeah, yeah. Sure no, he w he was really excited to come and uh, and and he was really complimentary about the club, um, the support that he was getting, players, staff. He was he was so happy to be part of of the league. And then just finally, you mentioned uh, Saliba and Vieira. Are yeah. they in that same pool that they might not play tomorrow? Let's see how everybody is today. Again, obviously they were they weren't selected. They were in the squad for a reason, and uh, we need to assess them today. Simon, can I find it? Yeah, what's the issue with, with Fabio and, and Williams' fitness like? They weren't fit enough to be in the squad. That's it. Um, of, of those six, I think it is, have you got hope of any of them being, being fit tomorrow? My hope is that everybody is fit and available because we need them with the amount of games that we have uh, already under the belt in the last uh, two weeks and, and what is coming in the next um, seven to ten days. Um, yeah, we need them. So hopefully today we get some good news. And is there anything you can you think has caused you know, to have sort of six players out, is it the fact that you're playing sort of Champions League again this yeah. season? Why do you think you've had sort of this injury? Different reasons. Some of them happened in training and some of them there were knocks, some very small niggles, uh, muscular niggles, but as well the load, you know, coming from the before the national team, after the national team, the load went through the roof, the demands continue to be really high and, uh, and the fact that we had three or four out already didn't give enough um, time to some of them to, to have the exposure that um, they needed. When you've got Man City next week, does that come into your thinking in terms of no. rushing players out? It's about now. It's about Bournemouth and this is the most important game that we have now in the season. That's it. James, can you ask me? Um, okay, I just wanted to ask you, it's been a while since I asked you about your five-phase plan. Are you in phase four now? Are you still in phase three? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I don't have time during <laughs> between games right now to talk about it. The phase, the phase that we have right now is 24 hours to prepare a game in the best possible way to to beat Bournemouth, and uh, and we can get into that maybe in an international break or when a little bit calmer. So you won't tell me if you're in phase three or four. Now, no. Maybe in a month's time I can tell you. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll wait then. I'll ask another time. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask about Reese. Uh, when he's been coming off the bench this season, he seems to have found a lot more consistency. In continue that in midweek. I'm just wondering sort of what's changed because before maybe he was a little bit more inconsistent with his performances but over the past few months he really seems to have found as a well, first thing availability, you know, and to find consistency you need to be available and uh, and if you miss periods, you know, your peak of form is going to um, is going to be disrupted and obviously then you're going to have less chances to play and now he's been obviously he had an eagle in precision he was out and now he's come back and he's finding form and and we need him he has a special qualities to play in wide areas in both positions and um, and especially with the with the situation we have now in with the front players it's it's been really important and obviously he's been stuck coming off the bench primarily is, is that where you see his role mostly as an, an impact player or do you think we could also see him starting a bit more like we did in midweek? No, we have to see him starting as well and we want to have um, a team that uh, that is more unpredictable and has the, the resources to to rotate. They have to become starters as well, you know, if not, it's, it's not enough.